Well, we're at the studios, Mr. West. Mm, what's that? Oh, you wanted me to drive you to the region studios. This is it. Oh. Hey, where did we get all the women? Search me. I picked you two up at the El Dorado at 2 a.m. this morning. Well, who is she? Oh, now, Ed, you know me. Why don't you send her home in another cab? Oh, you wouldn't let me. You said you was the Simonese twins. Nothing but a croaker could part you. A what? Uh, a surgeon. Oh, like that, huh? Uh. Well... Well, give me the bad news. No, no, wait a minute. I'm tired. Now give it to me. Well, the meter reads 142.50, not counting the 25 you touched me for. Ouch. Uh, not counting the speed tickets. Speed tickets? Yeah. We had to leave Santa Barbara in a hurry. Santa Barbara? Yeah, you smacked the caretaker at the golf club. I smacked the caretaker? Yeah. He got sore because you broke a window in the golf club. Uh, no humor. Well, it was after midnight. Oh, now, Ed, why should I want to break into a club after midnight? Well, you said you wanted to play golf with the policemen when they arrived. Policemen? Yeah. You said you were tired playing tag with them. Oh, uh, well, don't tell me anymore. Look, uh, mail me the bill and I'll send you a check. Oh, and here, here's a tip for you. Yeah, that's what's left of the 25 you let me have. Thanks, Mr. West. It's all right. Uh, hey. Yeah. What'll I do with her? Oh, well, uh, take her back where I found her and tell them I must have brought her along by mistake. Okay. Where have you been? Tucker's foaming at the mouth. He wants that song. What'd you tell him? I told him you worked all night to bring him a smash hit. Atta boy, come on. Did you enjoy yourself, dear? Oh, darling, I had a lovely time. That little spat we had this morning. Let's forget it, hmm? Did I hurt you very much? Oh, my little buzzard. Mm, my big buzzard. Okay, cut. The spirit of melody has arrived. <clears throat> Good morning, Mr. Tucker. What's the alibi this time? The, um, the song will speak for itself. Well, come over to the piano and let it talk. Danny, he's really a smash. I don't know. I haven't even thought of it yet. some polishing. Oh, of course. You can't stop to put on the finer touches when you're working night and day. What about the lyrics? Well, uh, Mike will give us a lyric in a day or two, won't you, Mike? Oh, sure. Sure, Mr. Tucker. Sure. All right. 
But I want the finished song in two more days. You understand? Yes, sir. Mike never delays us on his lyrics, do you, Mike? Oh, no, Mr. Tucker. Uh, Mr. Tucker, no. No. Can I look over some of those chorus girls now? Oh, yes, Mr. Tucker. When did you write that melody, Danny? It's terrific. <laughs> it should be. It's only Wagner's Tannhauser in disguise. It is? Say, you can't get away with it. That's stealing. So what? He never made any money out of it. I was only stalling till I could think of something. Well, come on. Let's get to work on something now. Ah, oh, wait a minute. Let's take a peek at the chorus. What for? I'm tired. I need an inspiration for a new number. Oh, you mean a new telephone number? Hey, Delacy. Yeah? Tell the girls to parade up here one at a time. All right, girls. On your feet. Form the line. All right, Madge, first out. Okay. Say, if that isn't Polly Blair, I'm still drunk. You're still drunk. Polly Blair wouldn't be in the chorus. Okay. Keep your chin up, Polly. It's up and sticking right out where it can land on it. If Tucker's still peeved after three years, he's an elephant. Be me. Give him that sort of a hungry look. We don't have to act to do that. Okay. Out. Overweight. Polly Blair's out. You know I won't have her working for me. I'm sorry, Mr. Tucker. We didn't think you'd mind her in the chorus. No actress ever walks out on me more than once. Listen, Mr. Tucker. What do you want? I want you to give Polly a break. She needs it. Get back in line. I know she got temperamental on you once, but she won't anymore. Silence. Get out of here. It wasn't so long ago that you were begging for a chance to direct one of her pictures. Quiet. Yes, and she's got more ability right now than you'll ever have. You're fired, you hear? Fired. Boo. <laughs> How is that for sound? Okay. Print it. Come on, let's get out of here. Danny, where are you going? Say, is your car out front? Yeah. Wait for me, I want to talk to Polly Blair. You've got work to do. You said it. I've been waiting three years for this chance. It was sweet of you to go to bat for me, but now you've ruined your chances with Regent. My only regret, sir, that I talked ourselves right out of a sirloin steak smothered in onions. Oh, Miss Blair. You know him? No. Maybe it's a meal ticket in disguise. Miss Blair, I've never had the pleasure of meeting you, but you did me a great favor once. You mean she lent you some money? Well, in a way, yes. Do you remember a song called, Who Am I? Do I? It was the hit number of my picture, Fugitive Princess. I wrote it. Then you're Danny West. That's right. I was down and out when you chose that song. You lifted me right up into the money. But it couldn't have missed anyway. It was a grand number. Say, couldn't we go to some nice, quiet place and sit down? Well, it'll sound sort of silly after waiting three years, but I'm very grateful to you. It's nice of you to tell me. Say, uh, couldn't we sort of rest our elbows on a table and talk this over? Well, I was wondering, how would you like to have dinner with me tonight? Say, at the Grove? We'd love uh, to, but... but we sent our dinner gowns to the, the cleaners. Yes. Oh, well, what would you suggest? We'd invite you to dinner, only uh, we just got back from a week at Coronado. And, and the mice they... got into our cupboard. Oh, I see. Well, my car's out front. We might buy out a market. That's the talk. Then we could have a spread at your place. What do you say? Uh-huh. All right, we'll wait for you outside. That's funny. The lights are on next door. Maybe the boat burn out. Maybe. Follow the leader. Lucky I saved these candles from my last dinner party. Saved? Yeah. Maddie wanted to eat them. I see. An old candle eater. Say, tell me, uh, is it against the house rules to put these things down someplace? Oh, quiet. Wait a minute. Come on. Come on. Put it over there, will you? Say, tell me, Polly, why did you go to Tucker in the first place? Just a desperate idea, hoping that if I humbled myself, it would appease his injured vanity. But why not some other producer? I've tried them all. When you walk out on a picture, you've committed the movie's unpardonable sin. Mm. Hey, you two scram. I'll whip this up in no time. All right. You 
open the cans and peel the potatoes. Nix, I'm no potato peeler. I'm a lyric writer. Careful, that might be perjury. Hmm. Broadway Butterfly. I saw you in that one. Mm-hmm. You certainly portrayed a broken butterfly to perfection. That was just a rehearsal for the role I've been playing of late. You know, Polly, you were almost too young to be a star. You haven't changed a bit. Quite a bit in the region above the years. No, well, I mean it. Why didn't I think of this before? The idea. You're going to give an audition for <laughs> Professor West. But I don't sing. I don't even know any of the new numbers. Well, maybe you'll remember this one. On the level, you've got a real voice. You really think so? Do I? I felt it hit me. It made me feel sentimental. Me? Oh, that's a shame. Yeah. Huh? No. No, it's not a shame. It's all of the good. See, I'm beginning to get ideas. I can't hear you. What? No, no, I'm not mowing along. All right, all right. Tell Mr. Tucker we won't hold him up this time. How's it coming? Oh, the music is just pouring out of him. It's just pouring out of him. How's it coming? It's not. It's in here, but I can't get it out. Maybe we better blast. We've got to do something. Tucker wants that song. There's Charlie rehearsing again. Yeah, and I'm getting mighty tired of it. We would live two floors above the Grove. Charlie Lane's orchestra. There's an idea. Hello, Danny. Where you been hiding? And working night and day. <laughs> Why, the boys seem to doubt you. Yeah, but they'd all be on relief if guys like me didn't write hit songs for them to play. Charlie, can I see you a minute? Sure. What's on your mind? You have a conniving look. 
They've got a guest artist appearing with the orchestra tonight. You don't tell me. Yeah. <laughs> What's her name? Paula Blair. You know, the ex-movie star. Yeah, well, that ex isn't going to mark a spot on my program. Why, you couldn't sell her for a dime a dozen. Oh, no, that's where you're wrong. She can still sing rings around anybody in pictures. Oh, yes, I almost forgot. Uh, with her, you get a chance to introduce my new song. And what a song. No kidding. On the level. Nobody's heard it yet. It's the best thing I've ever written. So, when do we rehearse it? Uh, rehearse? Sure, we don't even know your number. Oh, yeah. Yeah, well, uh, make it this afternoon, late. Okay, but be sure we get it exclusive. All right. Oh, yes, one thing more. Don't announce her until you're ready for the song. You know, kind of surprise the folks. Check. All right, I'll see you later. Right. Yes, sir. Yes, he's working right now. Huh? Oh, no, Mr. Tucker. I can't break in on him. He's inspired like. Yes, he's, he's right in the middle of it. You know where the, the boy's got the girl in his arms. He's telling her that he loves her. Well, Mr. Tucker, they're, they're all familiar if you, if you bring that up. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, I'll tell him. Yes, he's going to work all night. Well, I put it over. It's in the bag. You mean you got an inspiration? Have I? You'll be tickled to death when you hear this. Oh, that's swell, old pal. That's swell. You know, I was beginning to get worried when Tucker himself called up and laid down a deadline. But I said to myself, I said, that old pal Danny won't ever fail you, Mike. He'll come through. Am I boring you? Listen to this. Charlie Lane springing girl with million dollar voice tonight at the Grove. This is private tip to you. Don't miss. Signed, Jimmy Houston. Houston of the Hollywood Times? I don't get it. Is he sending telegrams to you or are you sending them to him? We're sending a copy of this to every producer in town with his name signed to it. Oh, you, you're bringing up a lawsuit. You don't understand. He won't know we sent them. Now listen, Polly is going to sing a new song downstairs in the Grove tonight with Charlie Lane's orchestra. We send the wires. Every producer in town will show up to see the new find. So what? So Polly's back in pictures. I'll show Tucker. Yeah, you'll be looking for somebody to put you back in pictures if you don't show him that song. Song, did you say? I got the chorus written already. Oh, no fooling. Let's hear it. Sure. I'm sitting on the moon, got the world by the feet. I'm sitting on the moon, got a very front seat. Blue skies are all at a sea, up where the rainbow went. Blue skies are covering me, the lucky star and I are friends. I am riding high and wide, and I don't want to stop. I won't be satisfied till I get to the top. I know that I'm heading for heaven, where beautiful dreams come true. I'm sitting on the moon, and all I need is you. Oh, boy, I say you're sitting on the moon with that. It's swell, Danny. It's perfect. Wait till you hear Polly put it over tonight. Polly? I thought you wrote it for Tucker. Tucker? He can't sing. Come on, now. Out you go. Send the telegram. Come on. Houston? What's all the mystery? They're up to something. Oh, no mystery at all. It's just a gag, isn't it, Mike? Oh, sure. Yeah. You know, like uh, ringing doorbells. Oh, good evening, Mrs. Wilkins. Mr. Wilkins? Hello. In regard to that young lady we were speaking of, I'm running a special interview with her on Saturday night. That'll be fine. She needs all the publicity she can get. And, uh, thanks for the tip. Oh, good evening, Mr. Stevens. Much obliged for that exclusive tip. Well, uh, I go on pretty soon. Yep. Still nervous? A little. Want to dance? Uh-huh. It might help. You look as gloomy as an undertaker on relief. What's the trouble? Well, don't let on I told you, but... Uh... Hey, what is this, a convention or a producer's night? If this is your idea of a rip, you've carried it too far. Here, I put aside important business to come here. Is the girl with the Ginny Lynn voice part of the gag, too? Uh, 
Now, what are you boys talking about? What gag? Wet singer. I understand it's Polly Blair. Oh, so that's it, eh? Yeah. So, the guest singer tonight will be Polly Blair. And Danny West arranged it all, huh? Yeah. Wait till you hear the smash song he's written for. Yeah, and you wait till the producers hear that he framed them. are leaving. Houston must have told him. I knew Danny couldn't get away with it. You should have known better than to send those telegrams. Haven't you any sense? No, I mean, yes. I don't know. I'm nervous. I'm taking pills for it. Now, leave me alone. Polly, they've all gone. They've left. Ooh, the producers. Danny, take me home. Ladies and gentlemen, I have a little surprise for you tonight. An artist who needs no introduction. Through the magic of the silver screen, her name and fame are worldwide. It gives me great pleasure at this time present Hollywood's own Polly Black. A great star with a great song, specially written for her by that Broadway master of melody, Danny West. Sitting on the moon.
knew you'd do it. I had to go through with it, but, but now I want to go home. Say, there's Worthington over there giving us the one so. Yeah, maybe he's looking for talent. You better tell him about me. Why? Huh? Here, take it over. I'm going after the best band job on the air. Mr. Worthington? Yes, it is. Well, it's a pleasure. How do you like my boys? All right. You should hear them from a broadcasting room. They really go to town. No doubt, but I'm not really interested in bands, but that girl who sang, I could use a voice like that on the Federal Oil Program. Uh -huh. I'm afraid you'll have a pretty hard time finding one. I did. She's a picture star, you know. What do you take for her contract? Well, Mr. Worthington, you're asking me to break up my whole ensemble. I don't know where I could find another Polly Blair. Our name is valuable. All right, I may consider buying your band, too. That is, if your terms are reasonable. Well, now, you, you see, well, suppose we go in the manager's private office and talk things over. All right. This is a nice place. I'll take it. Very good, sir. If you go with it. Any objection? One, I want to be 100% sure it's for the right man. <laughs> that lets me out. Natural curiosity prompts me to ask, how is it you've escaped marriage so far? Well, I'll tell you. Boys can just naturally run faster than girls. You like to kid about a lot of things that are serious. Can't you guess the reason? No. It's very simple. If I tell you I love you in a kidding way, then you can put on the chill and I can laugh it off. And you'll never know how much it hurts. But I wouldn't want you to tell me you love me in a kidding way. It's a crime to love anybody as much as I love you. Danny. On a level, I'd be afraid to take a sanity test. I'm that crazy about you. But you've hardly known me a week. It's been like years to me, ever since you sang my song. Where have you been all the time? Oh, sort of waiting around for you. My love is like a red, red rose. Say, that ain't a bad lyric. Is it original? A guy named Robert Burns wrote it. Can't amount to much. I never heard of him. Who is it? Yeah, oh, come in. Just, uh, just put it anywhere, boys. Yeah, hide it. I'll find it. Hey, this isn't your engagement party, you know. Oh, no? Well, then only have to get half past it. Eh? Wait, wait, wait. That's a girl's. Special delivery letters, sir. Huh? Region Pictures Incorporated. What? Say, maybe Tucker is congratulating us on your engagement. Mr. Daniel West and Michael Rooney. Gentlemen. Yeah, you see? Equal billing. Children, I'm appreciated. This will notify you that your term of employment is ended as of today. Yours truly, David F. Wells, President. Wait, wait, wait a minute. You, you know what that means? It means we're fired. Wait a minute. Put that down. I'll put it down. Just give me a chance. Not a word about this, see? Act as if nothing had happened. Oh, I'm not that good an actor. For my sake, will you smile? Hello, Maddie. Hello. Never mind the cocktails. I'm starved. Darling. Sit down, dear. Did you see Charlie Lane? Uh-huh. Well? He signed up with Federal Oil to broadcast from New York and wants to take me along. Oh, that's swell. Well, he'd be starting right at the top. But, uh, but I turned him down. Well, you can't do that. Now, what do you mean, can't? She did, and at a hundred bucks a week, that's when I fainted. But, darling, it's your big chance for a comeback. Your salary would skyrocket with you. But don't you understand? I don't want to go to New York. Oh. Were you looking for someone? Yes. You. And I've had a hard time finding you. Well, I'm busy entertaining some friends. Could you come back some other time? 
Well, yes. But I would like to know why you ran away from me. I ran away from you? Well, aren't you mistaking me for someone else? Well, how could anyone forget you, Danny? I went to sleep in that taxi with your arms about me. But when I woke up, you were gone. Oh, that night. Uh, well, you see, I'd had a few drinks too many. I, I must have picked you up somewhere by mistake. Oh. I guess the mistake was mine, believing that you cared. Well, I'm sorry, but I don't remember that. Well, Danny, you don't remember our romantic meeting at Long Beach? Nope, I don't. Our proposing to me while we were dancing at La Jolla? Nope. Hadn't I never would have accompanied you on chaperoned into Mexico. Mexico? Well, well, what did we do in Mexico? Why, dear, you said it took days to get a marriage license in California and you didn't want to wait. Well, now, don't tell me I married you. Well, of course, darling, well, that's why I'm here. <laughs> I'm sorry to have troubled you, but, well, I didn't know what to do. Well, uh, we'll, we'll figure out something. Oh, I'm keeping you from your friends. Yeah, well, look, uh, could you come back about 6.30? We'll talk it all over. Oh, you're so understanding. No wonder you made me care. Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> Polly, believe me, I, I swear I've never loved anyone but you. Haven't you done enough damage, you cheap songwriter? Oh, listen, Maddie, how could you blame me? Well, how many wives have you got, so still? Let's go. You bet we'll go, darling. Oh, listen, Maddie, suppose I drop over the hotel tonight and blow you the movie. We'll be too busy blowing to New York with Charlie Lang. Oh, don't you care, pal. The fluffy you married has got it over Polly like a tent. She's got that kitten on the keys. Look, it does something to your backbone. Uh, nothing nifty ever drifts my way when I'm stewed. All I ever get is the hiccups. Well, listen, is there any way I can get free of her? Not unless she divorces you. She's perfectly willing to be your wife, but you won't let her. Did you talk cash settlement with her? Apparently, that's the only way out. She said she'd accept $10,000 cash. My bank balance won't stand the hundred a week I'm paying her now. Yeah, and if you stop the grease now, she's liable to throw you in the can for none support. Look, you're not going to get any more jobs here. It's thumbs down, and Tin Pan Alley will always keep the wolf from our door. Why don't you go back to New York with me? No. Any place but New York. I'm sitting on the moon, got the world at my feet. I'm sitting on the moon, got a very front seat. Star and I are friends. I'm riding high and wide, and I don't want to stop. And I won't be satisfied till I get to the top. I know that I'm heading for heaven, where beautiful dreams come true. I'm sitting on the moon. My feet. I'm sitting on the moon, got a very front seat. Blue skies are all I can see, up where the rainbow ends. Blue skies are covering me, the lucky star and I are friends. I'm riding high and wide, and I don't want to stop. Satisfied till I get to the top. Oh, hello, Frank. Sorry to disturb you, Danny, but uh, I'm behind in the rent. That's it. I'd be willing to carry you, but, uh, but the bank owns the hotel and they expect you to collect. I'm afraid you'll have to dig up a couple of hundred or give up the suite. Frank, I can't. Hello. Okay, put them on. New York calling. Maybe it's a job. Hello? Oh, hello, Mike. How are you, boy? Don't ask questions. This is costing me money. Listen, Charlie Lane double-crossed Polly into this job. Worthington wanted Polly, not the band. 
Lane sold him a bill of goods. She was under personal contract to him. How did you find that out? No, wait a minute. What's Federal Oil paying him? 3,500 smackers. He's giving Polly 100. She's the only reason he's on the air. Shall I shoot him? No, hold everything till I get to New York. I'll make it somehow. Yeah, goodbye. Frank, that's important. Charlie Lane is double-crossing Polly. I've got to get to New York. Well, so you better. Uh, do you know anybody that would stake you? Yes, you. Frank, I've got to have $400. I'll send it to you as soon as I connect. But I came to collect the rent. And you're going to. $200 will take care of that, and the other $200 will take me to New York. How am I going to get the rent? Well, you're going to pay it, don't you see? And that'll save you the embarrassment of throwing me out. <laughs> <laughs> you win. Good. Let's get downstairs and get the money. Say, I never did like that guy. Give him a couple of stacks of me and he'll square half the loan. I'll be tickled to death. Any particular spot you'd like me to work on? Yeah, right there. <laughs> get a new deal or not? Well, you didn't give me time to explain. I was going to give her a thousand a week. I'll see that you do. And don't tell her you saw me. Okay. A thousand a week, huh? Oh, I knew you'd get action. Yeah, but not a word about it to Polly. I don't want her to know I'm in town. Oh, no, I wouldn't say a word. See, whatever happened to that dame you so proudly led to the altar? She doesn't know where I am, I hope. You need any dough? No, thanks. I got enough to last me for a while. Well, I guess I better get on downtown. When are we gonna see you? I'll call you up, Mike. Say, I hear you and Maddie are that way. Yeah, the little woman's just crazy about me. <laughs> tulips are sweeter than tulips. Where are the chops? Ye gods, they slipped my mind. Oh, I, I wouldn't have forgotten the little muttons, only... Uh... This had better be good. Well, uh, well, guess who I bumped into at Times Square today? Danny West. Oh, you're too smart. But don't say anything to Polly. As if I would. Is his wife still with him? How many times do I have to tell you they never lived together? He's on the toboggan, Maddie, not very far from the bottom. Looks as though he's doing sleeper jumps between meals. So you brushed a tear from your eye and split the bank roll? No, he wouldn't take it. No. Shh. Don't shush me. Hello. Hello. Hiya, Mike. Hello, Polly. What do you think happened to me today? You saw a red-headed Chinaman. Lane gave me a new contract for a thousand a week and more to come later. Really? I'm kind of ashamed of all the mean things we said about him. He's really regular after all. Yeah, any guy would be. After Danny socked him on the nose. Danny? You mean he's here? In town? Where, Mike? Well, he, he wouldn't tell me where he's living. Would you lie to me, Mike? Yes, I mean, no. Now, you know very well where he's living, don't you? Well, I, I have an idea. No more stalling. Where? Well, it's, uh, it's 600 and something McDougal Alley, Greenwich Village. 600 and what? How does he look? He looks swell, doesn't he, Mike? No, Polly, he looks bad. He, he needs a job, he needs new clothes. He, all the old pep has gone out of him. I'm going to see him. It seems to me you're showing unusual concern over somebody else's husband. And why not? All our good fortune came through his efforts and has shut every studio door in his face. And besides, I like the way he parts his hair. Polly. Oh, gee, I'm glad to see you. Come in. Danny, why didn't you let me know you were here? Well, uh, I've been kind of busy. Say, you've been busy, too. You're just about the tops in radio, huh? Danny, you don't know how glad I am to see you. You, you know, I heard... Uh, you know, I heard every one of your broadcasts. Never mind about me. 
How are you doing? Me? Oh, say, I'm doing fine. You know, the studio sent me on to look at some musical. Well, what are you doing in this place? Well, uh, you see, I'm, uh, I'm writing a song about Greenwich Village and, you know, the humble home and boy and girl. And I kind of thought I'd get a little atmosphere. It sounds intriguing. Hum it to me. <laughs> well, I haven't got it that far along. I'm, I mean, the melody. In other words, you're a big storyteller, huh? Oh, well, now, Polly, I... Listen, silly, I know all about you being fired and blacklisted, how you've been slipping. Oh, no, no, wait a minute, you got me all wrong. Stop it. Got any of the money you made, or did your wife take it off? Well, it... That's all I wanted to know. Listen, I'm not going to let you slip any further. You're going to write another song. But that's just it, Polly. I can't get an idea. Well, here's one. You're going to write another hit song for me, and I'm going to sing it over the happy-go-lucky hour. If there's another song in me, I ought to be able to write it for you. I'll try. You bet you will. Come on. Come on, where to? You're going to move in with Mike. He sold a couple of lyrics, and he's paid his rent. Oh, but gee, Polly... Listen, you've got to have a piano. You can work in my apartment. Maddie will do the cooking, and I'll crack the whip. Oh, Mrs. Simon Legree, you're swell. Polly, I can't get an idea. But you haven't half tried. Yes, I have. What's the use of kidding ourselves? I'm all washed up. Quitter? No, it isn't that. I... It's just that I'm written out. Danny. Hmm? Do you remember that first night in Hollywood when I thought I was through and you lectured me? Mm -hmm. Get back into that spirit again. No, Polly, it's just that I was dreaming beautiful dreams and then somewhere right in the middle of them, I got lost. Lost in my dreams. What's the idea of having all the blinds down? Don't you know it's morning? Maybe from his wife. I mean a studio. Well, whatever it is, it can't be as important as the song he's writing. Or if you monkey with the program. That's the song I sing in this spot. Dance musicians for you, they've only heard it once. It's unnatural. Yeah, but don't get careless and put it on the air. Remember, it's exclusive for Miss Blair. Okay. And she insists on plugging his numbers. Oh, she does, eh? I don't mind, but it doesn't fit in the program. Makes the routine sort of lumpy. Well, you tell her the program stands as I arranged it. I tried it, and she blew up. She's getting temperamental, just like she did in pictures. Well, she listen to me. Don't you love it? Yeah. I used to think if I ever went on a honeymoon, it would be to Honolulu. I've had the same idea. Miss Blair. Yes? I'd like to have a word with you. Certainly. Oh, pardon me, this is Mr. West. How do you do? Excuse me. Well, 
That new song you were planning on running in on our program, it's out. Why, Mr. Worthington, it's a beautiful number, it's out. Have you heard it? Don't let's argue. This is my program. I'm paying for it. The song stays in or I walk out. You can't walk out. Look at your contract, young woman. You can't make me sing. No, but if you don't sing for me, you'll not sing for anyone else. I'll keep you off the air for the duration of your contract. And if your public don't hear you for an entire year, you'll be through. Excuse me, Mr. Worthington, I couldn't help but hear what you said. Polly. Please, Danny, I know what I'm doing. I don't think you do. That new contract you signed three weeks ago. I'll break it. I had it checked for the best lawyers in New York before I bought it. You bought it? Please, Mr. Worthington, let me handle this. That's about the grandest thing I've ever seen, Polly, but I'm not going to let you do it. I'm not worth that kind of a sacrifice. Now, you've had two chances at success, Polly. Nobody ever gets three. You want me I to I want you to be sensible, that's all. Now, I'll always be grateful to you, but I'm not going to let you wreck your future. All right, then. I won't. The song's out. And a girl, now that makes sense. I wonder if you know what a swell person you are. <laughs> sure, I know. Now, come on, let's tell Worthington you'll be a good girl. You can't fool me. Lane is at the bottom of this. Forget it, Maddie. Hey, you're gonna lose this. But he's from Hollywood. Good friends, we have another treat for you. By popular request, Polly Blair is going to sing that lovely melody you heard last week, accompanied by Charlie Lane and his serenaders. Ms. Blair. Hold it, boys. Ladies and gentlemen, you've all been so nice to me during my radio engagement that I'd like to make my last song to you a new one. This song was written by the dearest friend I have in the world, and he wrote it just for me. The title of the song is Lost in My Dreams by the composer Danny West, who also wrote Sitting on the Moon. Are you looking for another sock in the nose? Sing it without music. I've been a dreamer ever since you came along. I'm still a dreamer. But everything I dream is wrong. This never happened while I was within your heart. It only happened after we drifted apart. Lost in my dream. I'm always tossed around and lost in my dreams. They never make any sense. For when they can, you drift away from me. Through all my dreams, all I can do is look for you in my dreams. But you can never be found. You're never
You shouldn't have. Oh, but darling, you were marvelous. Let's get out of here quick. Well, where to? I don't care anywhere. Oh, darling, don't. Danny, aren't you forgetting? Oh, 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 look. Come on. Goodbye, Mr. Worthington. Oh, uh, but I'm not leaving, and neither are you. But I don't know. Oh, you were splendid, and so was that new song. You've written a real hit. I hope you're right. Miss Blair. Will you continue on the happy go lucky hour? I will. Mr. West, will you continue writing songs for her? I will. Just make out the contracts to Mr. and Mrs. West. <laughs> Can't you take a hint there, Dale? Oh, 